Plant tissue culture has been a blooming technology for rapid multiplication, developing virus-free plants, genetically modified varieties, hybrid production, germplasm preservation and others. If you are new to this field and willing to know about why plant tissue culture is so much important, I recommend you to watch my videos on introduction to plant tissue culture, how it works and 11 wonderful applications of plant tissue culture. In today's video, we will learn how to set up a plant tissue culture laboratory from the scratch. We will see what are the basic equipments, the facilities required and what is the reason they are needed. Although you may find several videos on YouTube on this topic, I found few important information missing and I am sure you will definitely learn something new today. So let's begin. A tissue culture laboratory has seven major sections. A wash area, a store area, media preparation room, a laminar room, a culture room, photography area and acclimatization area. Now we will have a look at each of these sections equipments involved and why they are needed individually. First is the wash section. You need a separate portion for cleaning your explant, plastic and glass vessels like petri dishes, tissue culture jars, cylinders, beakers, dissection tools like forceps, scalpels and scissors. You need to have 24 hour water supply, sink with water tap connection and proper drainage. You also need to have ample of space for drying the vessels and others on benches or shelves. Detergents or chemicals like potassium dichromate sulfuric acid solution are used to clean the fresh and used vessels. Your tissue culture procedures starts as well as ends with the wash area. Make sure to maintain cleanliness in the area and avoid storing used media containers for long as it may invite contamination. Next is the storeroom. You need ample of space in the form of open shelves or cupboards for keeping your chemicals and storing fresh or washed vessels. Vessels should be of high quality to withstand high temperature during autoclaving. The chemicals should be of tissue culture grade. Growth regulators, hormones, certain chemicals need to be stored at lower temperatures for which you need a refrigerator. The storeroom or the section is usually present alongside the media preparation area. If you want me to make a separate video on chemicals and the hormones used in tissue culture, do mention in the comment below. The media preparation section. You need a separate portion to prepare, sterilize and dispense your plant tissue culture media. You need a bench for preparing and pouring media to the vessels. Following is the list of instruments that are must for your laboratory. Autoclave. It is like a pressure cooker in which you put your vessels, media and other stuff to make it microbe free. This is important step to prevent contamination during tissue culture. The media flask can be kept for one or more days prior to culturing to check if there is any microbial growth. If so, you should discard and make fresh media. If possible, you should have a separate autoclave for decontaminating the used media and vessels. Else you should clean and change the water of autoclave after decontaminating. Heat sensitive chemicals such as growth regulators or antibiotics are sterilized using syringe filters. For proper plant growth in morphogenesis, you need suitable pH. Also for optimal protein function and enzyme activity, appropriate pH is must. With pH meter, you adjust the pH of the media to make it suitable for explant culturing. Digital weighing balance. Chemicals and other components need to be weighed and added precisely to make a suitable media for tissue culture. To obtain distilled or the deionized water for preparation of media washing the explant and other purpose, you need water distillation unit or RO system. You would need a water storage and dispenser system too. Use of tap water for such application should strictly be avoided due to the presence of unwanted life forms, salts and other impurities that may affect media preparation and growth of the plant. A magnetic stirrer. To mix up the media and preparation of stocks, you need to constantly stir it and having an automated magnetic stirrer can save your labor and time. Next is a laminar room. After having the media and explant ready, you need to proceed everything under aseptic microfree conditions. For this, you need a separate room called as a laminar room. This is the key area of plant tissue culture laboratory in which you carry out operations like sterilization of explant, its aseptic transfer to nutrient medium and subculturing to fresh medium. All these operations are performed under laminar flow hood in which aseptic conditions are maintained using HEPA filters that makes the airflow microbe free. 
The internal environment of the laminar flow hood is sterilized with UV attached to it and sanitized with 70% ethanol or spirit prior to the aseptic operations. You need a Bunsen burner within the laminar hood for sterilizing scalpel, forceps and other such tools. You should have a dedicated lab coat, pair of footwear, a cap and a face mask before entering into the laminar room. Hands are properly sanitized and talking near laminar hood is a strict no while performing the operations. The laminar room is separated from outside using an air barrier system to prevent dust and other unwanted life forms to enter the room. Care should be taken to avoid unnecessary visitors to this area as this may invite contamination. Next is a culture room. This area is situated next to the laminar room. After transferring the explant to the suitable nutrient media, you need to provide right amount of light and temperature. You also need to control the duration of the photo period. So you need to turn on and off the lights for a specific duration of time for proper growth of the plants. If you do not want to do it manually every day, you can set up an automated day-night light control system in the room. Along with this, it needs to have air conditioning system and humidifiers for maintaining the temperature and humidity of the room. Depending upon the intended application, type of explant and species, you need to alter the culture or the growth room conditions. To accommodate large number of tissue culture flasks or the jars, you need to keep them on racks. All the racks are provided with fluorescent lights for proper illumination. Both the laminar room and the culture room should be on full time power backup else it may result in batch contamination or improper growth of the plants. For specific tissue culture applications like protoplast or the cell suspension culture, you need a rotary shaker and incubators for continuous stirring of the media. Next is the imaging area. For developing novel protocols for plant tissue culture, you need lots of experimentation and you need to make a record of everything. For example, to check the superiority of one nutrient media over another or to see the effect of different type and concentration of growth regulators on regeneration efficiency, you may need to take the pictures of the plants, roots, various growth stages for which the area should have suitable lighting and proper background for imaging. You may also need a microscope to see minute changes such as observing embryogenic calli. Without good images and their proper record, the protocols and papers are not publishable to a good journal. If you want to learn more about publishing a research paper, do check out my playlist on research and publishing. I am sure you will find some useful stuff there. The last is the acclimatization area. The plants are transferred from aseptic nutrient media to soil mix for subsequent growth of the plant. The tissue culture ready plants are first acclimatized in greenhouse or polyhouse or nate houses before directly transferring them to the open field condition. This area also has regulated light, temperature and humidity to some extent. Acclimatization increases the success of growth of the tissue culture plants in the field. Depending upon the scale of tissue culture that is a small scale or the large scale or the purpose of tissue culture such as research or commercial application, availability of the funds, the lab space and the equipments may vary. I will be uploading a series of videos on plant tissue culture. Stay connected to get informed as soon as I upload them. So that's all for the today's video. Do mention in the comment what do you find most interesting today. Check out my playlist on plant tissue culture, research and publishing, markers, techniques, genomics and others. Bye bye and see you in my another video.